Hope you're doing well. Sorry for this kind of weird thing here. Um, I don't go live very often. I think the last one I might have done was five years ago, but I thought, you know, I should probably get to doing some of these already. Um, let me, uh, since please forgive me, uh, buh, 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 buh. can any of you let me know if you're here? I'm trying to see if I can get messages here. Uh, just shoot me a quick message, just say here. Um, Hey guys, let me see. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure this out. Forgive me. Okay. I don't see how I can hear from you guys here, message-wise. Uh, let me grab my iPad real quick. <clears throat> ba -ba -ba. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope your uh, holidays have been good. Sorry, a little crooked. Uh, yeah, for the, you wouldn't think that a guy who's done probably over 400 YouTube videos that uh, I'd be such a rookie at this. Um, but I assure you we'll get started soon. I think I see a few of you online already. Um, let's go to comma. Live started soon. Oops. I think I see a few of you online already. Let me mute that. Um, let's go to comma. I'm gonna mute it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> All right. Do me a favor. Go ahead and uh, type something like "yes" if you hear me, because I want to do a sound check. You should, probably can hear me because I'm in a pretty quiet environment. All right, let me just uh, go and get started here. There's a bunch of you on already. <clears throat> here we are in December of 2023. So Thanksgiving has just finished, and now we're coming into the Christmas season. Now, one of the things that I always hear about from people is that they like to put things aside for, you know, until the new year. Sorry, I don't like this. I'm pretty particular about this. And, you know, everything gets put off and put off and put off. Like, okay, well, I'll wait till the new year. In fact, I was just uh, messaging with a mom <coughs> whose son came in to try, try class out last night. And she told me that she wants to have her son uh, finish what he's doing. And then she'll sign him up at the beginning of the year. Well, but so I asked, did he like it better? Oh yeah, he liked it better. Well, you know, why not start him now? All right, that's, <clears throat> to me, that's always better. But that's kind of a thing that we do. We put things off until the new year. What I always want to suggest to you is instead of doing that, do it today. Oh, but, you know, with the holidays coming up, I'm going to eat like crap and <clears throat> I want to kind of give myself that ability to eat like crap. Okay, I get it. So you basically want to put your goals off until January 1st. Now, not to be so morbid about it, but what if you don't make it to January 1st? Well, I guess if that's the case, then at least I had fun from now until January 1st, right? Or until, you know, I go sooner. And, right, so that's, okay, that's, that's valid. <clears throat> but if you're thinking that you're going to be around to January 1st and well past that, it makes sense for you to start on your goals today. If you're thinking about it, then do it. You don't need to wait until the first of the year. I know it's convenient, but don't wait. Do it now. So I'll give you an idea. Let's, let's break this up into a number of different areas that we're looking at. Number one, <clears throat> since we just mentioned it, eating, right? Diet. All right, so I want to be able to eat like crap over the holidays. If you normally eat like crap, then... That's fine. That's easy because all you need to do is do better. So let's say you eat 10 potato chips a day. Maybe you count them. I don't know. So to make yourself better today than you were yesterday, eat nine, right? You're still getting to eat the chips, but you're just not going to eat as many. 
And I had to do this with my coffee habit because everybody knows, most of you know that I have a coffee habit because in fact, I've got one right here. And um, if you want to cut your coffee down, let's say you're doing three cups a day. I don't know how many I do a day, probably two. <clears throat> but let's say you do three cups a day and you want to cut back on coffee. You think it's bad for you and you think I need to cut back on it. So cut back to two. My situation was I used to drink an iced coffee, a large size, with a lot of vanilla syrup in it or caramel, one of the two. Um, I used to go to Starbucks. I still go, actually. <clears throat> but I'd go to Starbucks and I'd get them to put 14 pumps in my venti iced coffee, which I don't know if you guys know, that's actually kind of crazy. I almost wanted my coffee to be juice, that juice flavor or coffee flavored juice <clears throat> because I wanted it sweet. So what I did was over the course of a couple of weeks, every time I ordered, I would take it down one pump, 14 to 13, 13 to 12, so on and so forth. And over the course of about two weeks, I finally got rid of the sugar, the sugar in my coffee. So now I drink it only black. And there was once one occasion where I ordered uh, an iced coffee. And what they did was they automatically put one pump of vanilla in it or simple syrup, one of the two. And I got it and I tasted it. I'm like, this isn't mine. And they said, and I looked at it, it had my name on it. It was mine. So then I realized, okay, I am adapted to black coffee. And if you're going to drink coffee, that's really the way you ought to drink it. I'm not going to say you should. I don't like to use the word should with anyone because to me, should is a bad word. Uh, if you tell somebody they should do something, it's, you know, it's like, who are you to tell me that, right? On the other hand, if you tell them one thing you can do is you can do this. And then they won't take it as an insult. They won't take it as an, as an automatic nope, right? <clears throat> People are just programmed to, to key you out on certain words that you say, right? So <clears throat> what I did is I took myself down from 14 pumps to none. So now I drink my coffee, I drink it black, and I really cannot drink it sweetened anymore. Now you can do that with other stuff as well. Now with regard to jujitsu, I had lunch with a very dear friend of mine who's been a member for the last, shoot now, eight years, or let's call it seven years, going on eight. And he's been very off and on. Uh, so is his wife. But they've been members continuous since then. And he would pop in now and again. I, he even has a key to the studio. He can come and go as he pleases because we have a weight room. He can come and work out. But he was telling me, he says, look, you know, I'm thinking of quitting because my body just doesn't feel good when I train. And I get that, right? Because it doesn't feel good to do jujitsu a lot of time. And, 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 and tell me if I'm wrong here. Because it hurts, right? Especially the way we do jujitsu. It's all about pressure. If you're on someone you're on top, you're in top game and your person on the bottom. And when you make a move, if your person, your, if your partner at the bottom goes, then that means you're doing it right. And I encourage that. I don't encourage strength, but I do encourage putting your weight in the right spot. Now, does that mean that you're not going to have any strength? Well, yes and no. If you train hard, meaning you train strong and you're still learning, let's say you're not a black belt. Let's say you're a, a white or a blue belt. One thing you can do to improve yourself or to set yourself on a path is to set a goal that I'm not going to use strength when I train. I'm going to use my technique and my weight. Uh, we call it connection, weight distribution, you know, the invisible jujitsu that Hickson has coined for his type of jujitsu. And that's what I'm always trying to do. I'm trying to teach our students that as Dave Kama has taught me, right? Don't use your strength because you're not always gonna have strength. When you're 55 like me, you don't have a ton of strength. No matter how much you work out, you're gonna be stronger than say the average 55 year old in my case, but you're not gonna be strong in an absolute sense, right? Meaning if I go, go up against myself who's 30 years younger when I'm 25, no, I'm not nearly as strong as I was when I was 25. I'm certainly a lot more knowledgeable. Um, I have a lot more jujitsu wisdom. Um, I could probably beat myself uh, going back that young, um, technically, for sure. Um, physically, ah, no, no. I was a lot tougher then uh, than I am now. Now I'm not so tough. Uh, but set your goals accordingly. 
And one of the things that people do that I think is a mistake is you come in for training and you want to beat people. Of course, the objective in rolling is to win, right? Now, most of us lose more than we win, right? So if the goal for you is to be better at jujitsu, forget about the belt. And I'll do another video on the belts uh, going back because one of, uh, on an old video I had, uh, somebody had commented on it. I think it's a good comment, so I'm gonna do a video on it. But <clears throat> don't set your goal for 2024 to be, I'm gonna be a blue belt or I'm gonna be a purple belt or I'm gonna get my black belt because the actual awarding of the belt is not necessarily up to you. I say not necessarily because it is up to you to a certain degree, but the, the belt is just simply validation provided to you by your instructor. Your instructor is the one who is ultimately responsible for awarding the belt. Now, sometimes instructors, me being one of them, <clears throat> an instructor, um, we can, we try not to, but we can award a belt wrong, meaning you give somebody a belt too early or way too late. Sometimes it's way too late because we didn't think about it and our school's gotten big, we run the business and, you know, and there's really no excuse for that. You know, I, I have, when I get a new student, I put them down on a ledger, right? A ledger is basically, it's my notes. And I have notes on all my students. So I can, I know when they started. Now I'm not looking at time per se, but I am looking at progress. On the other hand, if somebody's been, been with me for a while and they're diligent, they come and train all the time and they've been two years and they're still not at a blue belt level. Then I'll take it upon myself to get with my instructors, if I haven't already. You know, that's kind of an exaggeration. We usually, I don't usually wait that long. Um, and I'll, I'll spend more of my time to watch that student. I'll spend more time helping that student, giving them pointers. Oh, let's do this instead, okay? And then have them do it that way. Or, mm, yeah, stop doing it that way. And let's switch it to this way. And then I'll tell my, my student, I need you to set a goal, right? And if they, they're coming in all the time, then I'll look into something else. Maybe they're not doing the workout that we do prior. Our first 30 minutes in a two-hour class is a, is a, is a good, hard warm-up that is all jiu-jitsu related. It's not unrelated. It'll all benefit your jiu-jitsu. Or maybe the person is a little bit heavy. And I can sense and I can see because of their weight, they're not able to, to do what they want because their body just doesn't cooperate because of their size. So then I'll suggest to them, like I said, I never say should, you should lose some weight. I'll say, how much do you weigh today? 235. Okay. If you're 235 today, I'm thinking, looking at you, being, you know, six foot, six one, that you'd be better than you are today, you'd be better at 215. Oh, but Ryan, you know, that's, that's 20 pounds and I've never lost 20 pounds in my life. Well, how about we look at it this way? If you can lose the 20 pounds, you're gonna be able to have said you did something that you've never done before and that most people have never done before. Right? January 1st, a lot of people say, okay, for the new year, I'm gonna lose 20 pounds. I'm gonna start coming to class three times a week. I'm gonna start eating a low carb diet, right? So they, they set themselves up for January 1st. In the meantime, they do like shit from now until then. Well, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna go further down into your hole and it's gonna be harder to dig yourself out come January 1st, which means by February 1st, you'd have thrown most of those goals out. And by March 1st, you're full back onto what you were in December. Right? Any progress you made in January and February, most people will lose it come March 1st. And it comes down to goal setting. If you set a goal that's really high, like you're gonna, you're gonna lose 20 pounds, you're gonna eat better, and you're gonna train three days a week when you're doing only once a week, all on January 1st, probably not gonna happen. Now, it's not to say it cannot happen, right? Some of you say, well, I did that when I was, you know, last year, right? Okay, well, good, you're, you're special in that case. Not special like, uh, but special like good, right? It, special that they're, you're, you're rare. Because from what I've seen over the last 10 years of running Kama Jiu Jitsu Dallas Fort Worth, um, that, and, and training since 89. So shoot, I'm going to be entering my 35th year doing Jiu Jitsu. But, you know, in all that time, I've seen people come and go. And I've, some, I've seen some people do well 
but most people do not so well. And that's where, uh, you know, a goal of mine, right? My personal goal is to make it so that every student who walks through my doors leaves better than they came in. Or every person that I interact with is better today because I interacted with them today than they were yesterday. At the same time, me, myself, I'm always trying to be better today than I was yesterday. And if I had that mentality yesterday and the day before yesterday where I'm always trying to improve myself, it doesn't matter that you have an ultimate goal. But the goal is to improve myself just a little bit every year. And when I say just a little bit, let's say my goal is to do a, a you know, let's say, okay, let's back it up. Let's say I can do 100 push-ups cold, which I can. But I want to improve myself, so tomorrow I'm going to shoot to do 101. Or maybe if I don't want to just keep doing push-ups in perpetuity, I will start doing, let's say I try to do some burpees. And I'm going to do 25 burpees today, which is 25 more burpees than I did yesterday. But I still have to do my 100 push-ups. Then what I'll do is tomorrow I'll do 26 burpees. Kind of get how it goes. Now let's relate that to jujitsu, jujitsu goals. We all know where we suck in jujitsu. Now sometimes what is what or I suck. Somebody's gonna go, man, I wish I sucked like that, right? Because man, you do it well. well. But in my mind, I know that I can do it better. So my goal, let's say, is to make my armbar from guard more effective today than it was yesterday. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna work on it today when I get into class. And then what I'll do is I'll work on it the day after and I'm gonna make it better, better, better. I want it to be to where people know that when they're in my guard, that arm is gonna get taken home with me. <laughs> so if I can get to that point where everybody fears the arm bar, guess what? The choke is there. And if they fear the choke, guess what? The sweep is there, right? We call that the one, two, three from guard. Um, everybody who's in our academy knows that. And those of you who I've taught in a seminar where I went over that concept, you understand that as well. But yes, the one, two, three, when you see me do it, it's very smooth and it's relatively easy. But when another, even black belt, who hasn't been exposed to what we do in the way we do it, tries it, finds that it's not quite as effective for him. However, he may have another way to do things that work for him, but maybe he wants to learn the way we do it. So I show it to him and it's up to him to now drill. And we even drill it in class. You know, my goal when I run a seminar, for instance, is not to teach you as many things as I can. The first thing I'll do when I go into a seminar, if the instructor hasn't already told me what he wants me to teach, um, I never go in there with an agenda. Meaning, I'm not gonna go in there and go, okay, this seminar is all gonna be about guard passing. I don't do it that way because every school, every instructor, every student is different. Let's say I go in, I, I'm gonna run a guard passing seminar series and I walk into a school and they are guard passing monsters. Why am I gonna do that? Doesn't make any sense, right? So what I'll do is I'll ask first. I'll spend the first 20 to 30 minutes asking, okay, where can I help you guys? What is it that you're looking to do better? So then what I'll do is I'll go and show them. For the most part, it's weird. Most people want to get, know how to get out of cross-side. Um, and Or cross, what do you call it? We call it cross-side, so I don't know what you guys call it. Side control. I've even heard people call it side mount, even though you're not really mounted, but whatever. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. It's just a term. So I'll show our, our cross-side escape and I'll ask them specifically from where are you getting stuck? I show it to them. And then once I show that to them, then I'll make everybody do it. Let's, okay, let's all do it, right? So then they all go and do it. And why? Because that person had the balls to ask a question because a lot of times I'll sit around anybody questions, no. And then one person goes, Ugh. okay. So then I'll go over that and I'll make everybody do it just for the benefit of that one person who decided to raise their hand. But after that, I'll often ask the instructor, all right, where are your students having a lot of issues? Now, it's not to say the, the instructor can't fix it on his end, but I'll show you our solution. Um, I went into one studio where they wanted to do a lot of the self-defense stuff that we do. So being that I did train at the Gracie Academy a long time ago and I trained at Helson School, I know how they do it. I know how they teach it. So then I can, okay, so you're a Gracie University school. Here's how you learn it, right? They look, oh yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, so 
I can then go to the shortcomings. Okay, if we do it this way, this is what will happen. Oh, okay, well, let me show you what Hickson did and what Dave taught me about how to stop that. So it's another step that you add into the original concept and all of a sudden it's better. If you want to keep doing it, great. If you go, mm, I'll keep with the old stuff, that's fine too. Right? I'm, in, that, in that instance, I'm just showing you what we do. But then a lot of times the seminar will then go into a certain pattern. Uh, it'll go a certain path, not pattern. And then I'll end up showing what we do. So hence, guard pass, or not, uh, a playing card, the one, two, three, the choke, the arm bar, and the sweep. Um, and that kind of, we work that as a system. So I teach them as a system, not just as an arm bar, not just as a choke, and not just as a sweep. So my goal is to make it so that everybody leaves that seminar saying, dang, that was the best seminar I've been to. And, you know, the, the, the funny thing is that I get that a lot. Now, I'm not trying to be arrogant or whatever because I never expect that, but I try my best, right? And I want to make sure that people learn the concepts. And I do know how to teach them. And I know in my mind what is the best way to do it. Why? Because I've set goals for myself. How do I make myself a better teacher? Well, first of all, find out what people want to learn, find out how people learn, right? And what, that's why we've created, you know, based off the Hicks and Gracie curriculum, Dave Cobb has created what we call the Kama Jiu-Jitsu methodology. It's you take Hicks's curriculum, but you have to teach it in a certain way, certain order, so that people can digest the information as quick as possible. So that's a goal for us, is how do we make Hicks and Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, uh, how do we spread it, you know, to everybody, including you, right? How do we do that? That's one goal. Right. Well, you got to do it one at a time, right? One person at a time, one school at a time, one, one online you know, person as well at a time. And then as we start to get to more and more and more, then we can expand it. So we just hit our 10th year here at Kama Jiu Jitsu in Dallas. As far as in our Orange County campus, that's been around since Hickson founded it in like 1989 or so. And then Dave Kama took it over in 93. So Kama Jiu Jitsu in Orange County was Hicks and Gracie Laguna Niguel until 2012, and that point at which we switched. But, and I moved here to Texas in 2013, and we opened up in October 2013, so 10 years. We just made our 10 years. So my goal, my overarching goal, is to, is to do my part in spreading Hicks and Gracie's Jiu-Jitsu to everyone, because I feel it is the best iteration of Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Now, you do have grapplers that are phenomenal, that don't do Gracie Jiu-Jitsu even, let alone Hicks and Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, right? Um, I can just think of, uh, you know, one guy that I admire who's a phenomenal grappler is Eric Paulson, right? Um, and he he was with Hickson probably until his blue or purple belt, and then he left so he could fight, and then I don't know what he did after that, but I've been kind of keeping up with stuff that he does, and the dude's pretty awesome, right? Um, so I don't know who he ultimately got his Jiu-Jitsu black belt from, but he did get it, and he's got multiple degrees on it, and and he's somebody that I respect very much who, even though I don't know him, I saw him at the academy way back in the 90s over at Hickson's place, um, but then I didn't see him after that. Um, so, but, you know, but he is a jiu-jitsu black belt. I just don't know who he got it from. You know, and then you got wrestlers who are phenomenal. You've got uh, Sambo guys. Um, even, what's that, um, Khabib, right? Phenomenal grappler. No Gracie jiu-jitsu exposure at all, right? And then you have Gracie jiu-jitsu people. So, it's just grappling in general, but every expression has a little bit of nuance. So my goal is to show people to spread Hicks and Gracie Jiu-Jitsu around as much as I can. But it takes little goals. So one of my goals was to, was to create a black belt in someone. And uh, my, the first black belt I ever awarded was 2021. It was for Zach, uh, Zach Womack, who is uh, one of our black belts here at Kama Jiu-Jitsu. And, and another goal of mine is to, as we expand the roster of black belts, we can expand our classes with black belts teaching it because we do have a number of open mats, as we call them in our studio, that are really classes that are taught by non-black belts. Right? Whereas in a, in a, with a black belt teaching, we call it a class. Uh, that's really just, it's just semantics. But it's just to kind of let members know the difference, right? Uh, but we have six black belts in our Texas Academy now. We have three in our, uh, in our California Academy. So my goal is to have a whole team of black belts uh, over time. It takes a long time. It took me 10 years to be able to create, um, what, four of them. 
Um, one of them came to us as a black belt, and then the fit, the sixth one is me, obviously. Uh, so, <clears throat> but that's kind of goal I set. I set goals that are not too big, right? But I do set goals that, you know, I'm, I'm looking long term, but I have to set goals to get me to there eventually. Because if I just look long term and just set that as my goal without having little mini goals to get me toward that direction, then I will never be successful. So for those of you who are looking for your blue belt, that's fine, right? Set that aside. But what I want you to do right now is to start to look, okay, where am I not effective? And go in that route. Don't go to where you're effective. If you're always mounting people and choking them out and that's your go-to, stop it for now. Maybe you're not as good taking their back and choking them. Then do that. Maybe you're not as good choking them out from guard. Do that instead. And just do it every day and just seek to get 1% better today than you were yesterday. If you can do that, then what will happen is that blue belt will come or that purple belt will come because it'll be where your instructors are going like, huh, look at that, right? Ryan is now choking everybody from guard when a month ago he could only choke people from mount. But let me test to see if Ryan is still good at mounting somebody and choking. Ryan, Next time, I want you to mount them and choke them. Okay, mount, choke, done. Oh, yeah, okay, so he's still good at it. But, okay, Ryan, from now, no more choking from mount, only choke from guard. Okay, and I'm doing it. I'm not as good, but I'm doing it better than I was last month, right? Where I developed that reputation where I couldn't choke anybody from guard, right? I want it to be, and, and speaking of uh, that black belt, Zach, when he first came on board, he was a blue belt with maybe a stripe or two on his belt, been training six years, and what, I, what, uh, what we did was I, I paired them up with all my advanced white belts, meaning my white belts that are probably going to be a blue belt within the next month or two or three. And the reason is because a lot of times the way we teach with our methodology and stuff, I've found that our upper white belts know as much as a lot of blue belts, if not more. Our blue belts know a lot, of, know a lot more or they have a greater understanding than a lot of purple belts. Not all but a lot of them. So what I do is I, I, I don't want to have somebody, a higher belt, go and smashing them. I want to see a good match. I want to see one of my top white belts going against him when he was a blue belt. And sure enough, he armbarred them all. Didn't choke a single one, but he armbarred all of them. So he joined, became a member, and first thing I did was when I trained with him, I went into his guard, right, because he liked to armbar me from guard, and I just tucked my arms in, but I gave him my neck. He took my neck, he took the bait, but his choke was not good. He just uh, 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 finally went, yeah, professor, I, I, I can't choke you. And I said, I know. He says, how'd you know? I go, cause you arm barred all five of them just now. And you did it with relative ease. I didn't see you choke them. Had you been able to choke, you'd have kind of mixed it all up a little better. But I see you're kind of a one trick pony right now. So here's what I'm gonna ask of you. I don't want you to armbar anybody until I tell you to. Oh, yeah, I know, right? It's something he didn't want to do because it was a place of discomfort for him. So the goal that I set for him was to have him choking people. The goal that he needs to have for himself is, okay, I know I'm good at armbars. Now my goal has to be to do as Ryan asked and start choking people. It's going to be very uncomfortable because I'm not going to be able to win initially, but I'll do it because he asked me to. And he did. And within about two or three months, he became a choke monster. And people are like, wait a minute. You know, I hate that he, he chokes me now. They all forgot that the very first day he came in, he armbarred everybody. So after that time was over, you know, I, I promoted him and I told him, all right, Zach, now you can start arm barring people too. Well, now he has chokes and arm bars in his arsenal. And from that point on, I think it clicked in him in that he needs to always go for things that he is not good at. Because the stuff that you're good at in jujitsu, you won't forget. Believe me, you won't. Because your body has the motion already. It should be automatic when you get good at something. But there are a lot of things that are not automatic. So it's your job to set your goal to be better at everything. Does that mean you're going to be as proficient with chokes as you are with arm bars at the end of the year? 
maybe, right? But what I always tell everybody is this. Try to set it so every position matches up, right? And then what will happen is you have your new baseline where everything you can do at a level five, right? Well, then choose something to take it to a level six with everything else now being a level five. Once you get up to level six, abandon it for now and go find a, a, a level five thing and take it up to six. Eventually, everything is taken up and that's how you improve. So your white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, black belt, right? But what people do is this. They go, ooh, I'm really good at playing guard. And I think a lot of instructors will be mistaken as well and they'll say, tell, they'll tell a white belt, or a blue belt, a brand new blue belt. Hey, you're really good at guard. That's your game. You should just play that. Wrong. You're really good at guard, so stop playing it. Play mount. Play cross side. Play knee on belly. Play back attacks. That's on the offensive side. But if you can't get out of anything, then you need to practice getting out. So set your goal as you need to get out of cross side from everybody today. Everybody. Well, if I can't, okay, well, there are 10 people in class and I only got out of three at the end of the day, right? So tomorrow, I'm going to try to get out of four people's cross sides, right? And then five and then six. Or always make sure that you, you improve or at the very least, you match what you did yesterday. Because as much as we want to improve every day, we aren't always going to. But I don't want you to close a day out not having improved something. Just like I said earlier, if I can do 100 push-ups and I don't want to do 101 today, I'll do another thing. I'll do my 100 push-ups, but I'll improve myself. I'll make myself better by doing another thing. I could do jump squats. I could do burpees. I could do, um, I could do sprints. You know, I can hit the gym, right? Maybe I only go to the gym twice a week. Now I'm going to go three times a week, whatever, right? Um, make yourself better. Because if you make yourself better, you will be better everywhere. It's a mindset, to tell you the truth, if you don't already know that. When I say it's a mindset, anybody who's successful in anything, they're always looking to, you're either looking to do something you've never done before or break something that you're good at and make it even better. Right? When I say break something, meaning that let's say you always have one way to pass guard and you're good, you're good. You know, you pass everybody's guard this way. However, you can only pass one way. Now you can get it, everybody. Okay, to make yourself better tomorrow, how about learning a brand new way to pass a guard? Something that's not in the same uh, line of guard passing as you would normally do. Let's say you always start with guard pass one, which is what we call the Elio pass, right? Basic one, arm under, right? And I can pass everybody, pass everybody. So I think, okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna go to a double, double, double leg pass, right? So boom, you get the double. So you can do, you can do the, the Elio, you can do the double, the single, the double. We saw call it cross side one, cross side two. But let's say you beat everybody with that. Now, add in a knee slice, right? But it, it's all related. It all sets up from the guard pass one. So I can do all those but I want to improve myself going forward. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop doing that guard pass for now because I've got it pretty much down and nobody can really stop it. What I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start backing up and playing an open guard type game, right? Let people, let people get set up. Grab my sleeves, grab whatever you want. Open guard. And now from there, I'm going to work my guard passing. Oh crap, I got swept over. Oh man, I got arm, arm barred. Oh, I got choked. Okay, so I know I'm not good at it. So step one was trying something new to improve myself in general or improve my game, okay? Step two would be, all right, so I know I suck at passing open guard, so I'm gonna keep doing it so that, you know, my goal is to keep doing it until I can be just as proficient doing that one as well. And what'll happen is over the years, you'll probably have three, four, five different starts to passing guard, right? And you'll be able to do all of them extremely well. It's much better to choose one at a time and get really good at it and then jump to something else and get really good at it than it is to learn five different ways to pass and play it for a while and then jump off and go to another one, play that for a while, jump off. Because you're not going to raise the bar high enough to make it to where you can't forget it. So do it till you cannot get it wrong. And then do something else that you are always doing wrong and do that till you can't get it wrong either. So here we are in December, 
set some goals for yourself that will take you and give you a running start into January. If you can do that, you're already gonna be days, weeks ahead of those people who are waiting till January 1st to start. Because you know, if you're gonna wait to start, then you're gonna do a bunch of crap from now until then, right? As they say, right, if you wanna get out of a hole, the first way to get out or the way to get out is to stop digging it deeper, right? Stop digging it deeper by eating like crap. Stop digging it deeper by slacking off from your training. Stop digging it deeper by, by thinking complacent thoughts, right? right? Think of improving yourself. And if you do, you do it today, by the time January 1st comes, you got that running start and you go, holy crap, <laughs> I'm already eating better and I have, I've been eating better for, what is today's date? Today is December 6th. I've been eating better for what, 25 days already. Imagine what kind of head start you can get in 25 days, right? Because people will sometimes ask me, hey Ryan, how do I lose weight? Well, let me ask you, how are you eating? Well, I just eat regular meal. What, a balanced meal? Yeah, so you eat, you know, starch and meat and veggies. Yeah, and I eat really well, I try not to overeat. Okay, well, let's try something else. Let's try, right? Let's try taking the carbs out. Oh, man, I love carbs. I can't do Okay, okay, let's, let's do something different then. Instead of taking two scoops of mashed potatoes, just take one. Well, then I'm going to be hungry. Okay, well, then take another portion of protein. Chicken, fish, shrimp, steak, whatever you eat, right? Take another serving of that. Cut the carbs in half. And then do that for a week, right? And then cut that in half. And then cut that in half. Eventually, it'll just be... Take a spoon of potatoes, eat it. Okay, that's it. And then you just continue on. That's what I do, right? I'll, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I like to eat. I like to eat junk food just like anybody else does, right? Well, some people don't, but I, I admit I do. I don't eat a lot of it, but I will eat it from time to time. As you say, you give yourself a treat, right? Um, but here's the thing. I, I so rarely eat a good amount of junk food that when I do, I feel bad for it. Right. And that's a good thing. You know, I feel guilty about it, which means that I tell myself, OK, I have to work harder now because I did that. Right. And you don't want to do that. So if you do something bad, OK, don't knock yourself out about it. Don't beat yourself up. But instead, go, OK, tomorrow I have to do better. Right. And if it was yesterday, then today I need to do better. And if you recognize it, stop it right away. Oh, crap. I'm eating junk food. Ugh, OK, stop. Right? On the other hand, if you told yourself, yeah, I'm going to eat some today, then eat some. That's okay. You know, you have to have fun in life. You have to enjoy life. But enjoyment comes in moderation. So just like going back to our jiu-jitsu thing, you like to mount people and choke them from the mount. Okay, well, that's great. It's fun. It's easy. Okay, well, start making it harder for yourself. So set your goals differently. Don't have necessarily a belt goal. Don't have necessarily a weight goal. Just do better today than you did yesterday, right? If you go to the gym, you know, if you don't do jujitsu, and men, if you don't, you go to the gym. Here's what I used to do. I used to write all my workouts down. Um, I'd spend an hour in the gym, and about 20 minutes of it was writing my workout down for that day because I'd look at what I did yesterday. And if I did, if I bench pressed 185 and I did it for 10 reps, today, I did it yesterday, but today my goal would be to surpass 10 reps ultimately to get to 12. Because if I get to 12, then tomorrow when I go to the gym, or not tomorrow, but the next time I do bench, I'll do 195. And then I'll just push it for as many reps as I can. So let's, so that, let's say it's a new weight. I've already done 185 12 times, and here I'm at 195, and it's just really tough. It doesn't matter because it's the first time I'm doing 195, and 195 is an improvement over 185. Now, you could calculate it out and go 185 times 12 versus 195 times whatever, and you measure the pounds, right? And you could say, all right, I didn't push as much weight today as I did yesterday. I never, I never made it that complicated. I just said, look, I'm going to do 195 today, and I'm going to do as many as I can. So let's say that day I do seven. Good. That's good. So tomorrow or the next day I do bench, rather, because you don't really do bench two days in a row. Next time I do bench, I'll see, okay, I did 195 times seven. So today, my, right, my workout down is 195 times eight, right? And I'm gonna do eight today. If I don't do eight, then I'm gonna at least do seven. If I stop at six and I cannot go anymore, I'm gonna rack the weight, I'm gonna wait, 
and I'm gonna do it again. I put a six, I write a six where I had a seven, I cross out that seven and I put a six and I put a minus sign, which means I messed up. I did not meet my goal. I don't like seeing minus signs in there, I hate it. But that's all I could do that day for whatever reason. So the next day, I'm still gonna try for eight. But if I get seven or six, oh well, it's a minus again, right? Until I get that plus. And then when I get that plus, guess what? Eventually I'll be at 195 times 12. Now I'm gonna go up to 205. And that cycle starts all over again. But when I look back at the year when I started, I might've been benching 135. And here I am at the end of the year, I'm benching 205. Because I took it up a little bit at a time. I didn't just go in and just, go, uh, just start pushing as hard as I can. And then, oh, well, one day I did 155, another day 135, another day 185. And it, it's too random like that. Set your goals out. And you see how methodical I was when I lifted weights. That's how methodical I am when I'm doing jujitsu. And that's how methodical I am with regard to teaching our students. Right? I asked them, what did we work on last time for you? Or when you were in your private last time, what did you work on? Oh, I worked on this. Worked on worse position escapes. Okay, well, let's see how you do it. Oh, yeah, that's actually perfect, you know? And I'll go tell the instructor, hey, you did a great job teaching him that. So now I'll go, okay, now let's do seatbelt escapes. Have you done that before? No, not yet. Okay, let's work on that, right? And then that's how we build all the components of the ladder. We call it the Kama Jiu-Jitsu ladder. That's part of our methodology, right? So, and, and then all my instructors know the order, right? So I could go, I could teach somebody today worse position. And then the next person would then ask, what did you learn last time? And they'll teach seatbelt. And then the next person, next instructor, you know, same person would go and say, okay, they'll check. Okay. Yeah. You're doing, you're doing seatbelt escapes and you're doing the worst position escape. Great. Now let's work on mount escapes. And then they can go, they can do all the different teachers and they'll get the same experience. Why? Because we work off the same curriculum, same methodology, right? But <clears throat> In our overall goal at Common Jiu-Jitsu, the spread Hicks and Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, we had to lay out a plan to do it, right? So first thing is, is, you know, get that curriculum down. All right, next thing is do the methodology. Third thing after that is implement the methodology. Fourth thing is keep implementing the methodology, right? And, and get everybody doing it. So that's how my goal setting works, right? So what, am I, what are my goals for this coming year? Well, my goals for this coming year is to take Common Jiu-Jitsu as far as enrollment to a higher level over the course of the quarter than we were in this last quarter of the year, right? But we do look at it monthly and I do look at our numbers daily, right? But then, and the reason why is because I wanna share this art with as many people as we can. Uh, I'm not gonna necessarily share it with everybody because not everybody wants to learn it, you know? And to them, if they don't know the difference and if I can't convey the difference of why you wanna learn what we do versus somebody else, and if I'm not successful or they just don't care, then they're just gonna go wherever and they, they won't be here. Okay, well, you know, I need to get in front of more people so I can, I, can, I can show this, I can talk about this. But really, my ultimate goal in teaching Kama Jiu-Jitsu, because I, you know, I did, many of you know, I, I, I have a sales background, you know, I did financial services, I worked as an analyst at a money management firm, and I also worked in sales, uh, doing insurance and financial planning, all that. You know, but now I teach jujitsu, which for the last 10 years, I've never had a greater time doing anything in my life. But one thing I've learned from that, oh, by the way, I mean, if you've been watching, great. If you don't mind hitting the like button, I really appreciate it. You know, we're at 11 likes right now. If I can get to 15, you know, by the time we're over, that'd be awesome. Um, so, <clears throat> and also if you haven't subscribed, please do so if you want to see more content. Um, <clears throat> but... You know, if my goal is to spread the art all over the place, I'm going to try to do it. But what I'm not just going to teach jujitsu because, you know, it's not just jujitsu. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to change people's lives. That's far more significant than just teaching jujitsu. And jujitsu is my tool to change people's lives. Because I've said in so many videos that so many of the pressures we come across in life happen in an accelerated version in jujitsu, right? Pressure, um, discouragement, uh, elation, right? When you catch somebody, um, you get all these emotions, you know, excitement. You get them all when you're doing jujitsu. Whereas in life, you may not get all these feelings and emotions happening in one day, right? You might be, you might be happy for a month, 
and then for a month you feel like crap because now business is going down and you have all these pressures. Or another time it might be, you know, my child's not doing what I want him or her to do. How can I convince them they need to do what I do based on my experience? You know, I live life, right? You know, those types of things, you know, don't come every day. But in jujitsu, if you, if you end up training with a lot of people, you on one moment, you're going to go, man, I'm great at this. Another moment, man, I suck at this. Another moment is, ooh, that hurts. Another one, oh, he told me it hurts on him, right? And then it's, man, all I did was I, get, I got beat today. Or, ooh, today was a good day. I won every moment, right? But you're going to have all those emotions in jiu-jitsu, which is why jiu-jitsu is such a great tool for us to do. If you don't do it now, I highly encourage you to seek it out right? And it'll put you in a spot to where you are always uncomfortable, at least if you're doing it right. And if you expect to get really good at it, then yes, you want to always be uncomfortable and you want to find your way out of it, right? Remember, the, the, I, some of you have been watching our videos for a while, but I don't expect you to go back and, and dig back, you know, to video, you know, one out of 400. But, you know, I, I, I once told a story about, a, about the lobster, right? How does a lobster... You know, how do, what does a lobster have to do with us, right? A lobster has a shell. It doesn't have bones like we do, right? Our bones grow, our muscles stretch and all that, so we just grow, 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 right? Whereas lobsters, their flesh grows, but the shell doesn't. So what happens is the flesh ends up pressing, pressing on the, on the inside of the shell to the point where it's very uncomfortable. And if they don't do something about it, the lobster will die. So what do they do? They have to molt, right? So they have to get rid of that shell. When they get rid of that shell, they're now all squishy and soft, right? They have no protection anymore. They have no exoskeleton, as we call it, outside skeleton, the shell. So now they have to go hide somewhere. And they're like this, you know, they're vomiting. Well, I'm just kind of speculating here, right? You know, you're a lobster, you have no shell. So you, you're like, you know, you got to make sure that nobody comes in and eats you. So what you do is you just... You wait until that, that, that flesh outside hardens into a new shell, but it's going to be a bigger shell because as soon as you came out of the shell, as soon as you got out of the shell, your body expanded. So now that it's expanded, you can't fit back into the shell, right? But now you're going to develop a new bigger shell and then that'll serve you until you get tight again and then you're going to have to get rid of that shell. So what I want you to do in setting your goals is you're comfortable now. Look for something that's uncomfortable and do it but do it 1% at a time. Don't try to go whole hog into it because the, the shock to your system will be so great that you may achieve it, but you're going to say it wasn't worth it, right? And then you're going to quit, you know, like we have the Blue Belt Blues, right? You know, if you, if you try everything and just work for the belt, work for the belt, work for the belt, and you do what you need to take to, what it takes to get to the belt, you finally get to the belt and then you go, man, that sucked. And then you're going to quit. But if you look at life in terms of little challenges, what will happen is you will progress. Not only in jiu-jitsu, you'll find that you'll apply it to life as well. And you're going to go, wow, all of a sudden, since I started jiu-jitsu, I've, I've quit drinking, I've quit smoking, I've quit overeating, I've lost 40 pounds. You know, now I have this, this newfound ability that I can do. You know, the other day, somebody in the parking lot confronted me and started yelling at me, and I just calmly just walked away, right? And it's like, yeah, no big deal, right? And that all comes from you going through the trials and tribulations of jujitsu. Once someone had asked Grandmaster Hicks, and I mentioned this before as well, can an average person earn a black belt in jujitsu? His answer was no. Because it's an extraordinary person that gets a blue belt, let alone a black belt in jujitsu. Right? But any average person cannot achieve that. But any average person can start. Right? We'll start wherever we are. We'll start as an extraordinary person. We'll start as an average person. We'll start as a mediocre person. But at the end of the day, that mediocre person can surpass the extraordinary person just based on how they implement the principles that they learn in jiu-jitsu. And that's what I want for you. So... Unfortunately, I didn't know how to get any of the comments and questions up. I don't even know if there are any, um, but yeah, if there weren't, that's fine. I hope you got something out of what I talked to you about today. And really the message is don't 
Wait till New Year to get yourself started on your goals. Set your goals today and start running to them right now. But if you feel you're not getting as much progress as you want, do not be discouraged. Instead, just try to make small incremental goals. If in one particular thing you cannot progress today, find something else to progress at. And if you can't progress at that one, find another thing to progress at, right? There are a number of things that you maybe want to do on any given day, you know, for the rest of your life, right? And if you're not progressing somewhere, that's fine. Just match it and then move on to something else and then come back to it. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to, pro you don't have to progress at one particular thing 1% a day. You just have to progress as a person 1% a day. And if you can look back and go, am I better today than I was yesterday? And if you can honestly say that you are, then you did great. If you say, no, I didn't, okay, well, chalk it up as a failure day and let me remedy that. Simple, right? Don't beat yourself about uh, beat yourself up about it. Just go and do it. And that's another thing. Like, I'm not a big thing about slogans, but yeah, just just do it. Yeah, don't 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 think about it too much. Just just do it. So anyway, that's all I got for you today. I hope this helped you. Um, maybe I'll do these live ones going forward. Um, if you guys comment and you like this format better, then I can do it. Um, it's easier because if I film a video for you guys, then it has to go through editing and all that kind of stuff. Whereas this, not really. Um, this is very easy for me, but I just have to, you know, kind of learn how to do things a little better because like I said, I haven't done one of these in five years. But anyway, that's all I have for you today. And I hope everything goes well for you. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I hope you have a great holiday season, or as we say here, Merry Christmas. Um, <clears throat> but if you don't, then if you watch this, come back and watch it. And maybe you weren't ready for it today, but you'll be ready for it when it, when it comes back up. So anyway, that's all I, all I got for you. Come visit us at any of our campuses. Oh, we have two of them. We have uh, Irvine, California. We have Flower Mound, Texas, which is Dallas-Fort Worth. You can also come and visit us online at kamajujitsuonline.com where we have our curriculum and you can learn how we do things in our own academies. Anyway, well, that's all I have for you today. Take care. Happy training. Bye now.